Today we'll be outlining some of the common mistakes when we're attempting to connect a computer to an Active Directory domain. This will be in a home lab or small business environment and today I'm using Windows XP Professional and Windows Server 2003 Enterprise. These are both a virtual machine running together. As you can see here my Server 2003 is running correctly and is all online and switched on. But as you can see I'm having some troubles connecting my client computer which is my XP Professional box to my Windows Server Active Directory. So today we're going to be outlining some of the common mistakes and how we can correct them. So if you're seeing an error like this when you're connecting your computer to the Active Directory, you're not alone. This is a really common error and we'll go about trying to fix it today. So the first thing we actually want to do is show you how you connect your computer to an Active Directory. So you right click on my computer and go to properties and you click change computer name basically and in the domain section you're trying to type the fully qualified domain name which is your FQDN and clicking OK and you're going to see an error like this if some of the tasks that we're going to go through today haven't been performed. Don't read too much into the details, they're really vague and they don't tell you anything at all really. So the first thing we want to do is identify whether the computers are actually talking to each other. So to do this let's head over to my server 2003 virtual machine and we're going to open the command prompt and find out the IP address of the server. As you can see there it's showing up as 192.168.2.123. Now I want you to write this down because we're going to head back to the Windows XP virtual machine, open a command prompt and ping that IP address as I'm doing right now. If you're getting any replies at all from the server that shows that the computers are speaking to each other and we can rule out a network issue at this stage. The computers are talking to each other fine, there's no issue there. Also, there's something to know if you are using a virtual machine or VMware, something like that for this uh, home environment or small business setup. You need to ensure that both the server and the clients are using the same kind of network connection. So if you go into the virtual machine settings, you'll see that I am using a bridged connection, which gives the virtual machine a physical IP address on my network. Even if you're using other options like host only or a custom network, you need to ensure that both the client and the server are using the same type of network connection. Don't worry about this though if you're using physical hardware uh, for your server or client because this won't apply to you at all. Now the next thing I want to talk about is changing the DNS servers on your client to that of the IP address of the server. More often than not, when I've been setting up a home environment or a small business environment of Active Directory, this has always been the main issue that prevents me from connecting the client to the server. So to do this, we need to head into our control panel and then we need to go to network connections and find the network adapter that we are using on the client computer. So we'll head to the control panel, network connections in XP's case, and we'll right click and go to properties on the local area connection which is mine you might be using a wireless card just go to properties and scroll down to internet protocol now on windows 7 or later i think this might be called internet protocol version 4 and you'll have another option for version 6 forget about that for now we're using version 4 today we can still allow the client to obtain an IP address automatically, but we want to use our own DNS servers. So in the primary DNS server, we want to enter the IP address that we wrote down, and that's the IP address of the server for the Active Directory. In the alternate DNS server, we're going to type 8.8.8.8. .8 now this has always been some kind of alternative DNS that I've always found on the internet. Uh, for people who don't want to use the ISP's DNS server. I don't know why it exists, it's just there as an alternative, but we won't need that for now. Once we've changed the DNS server, we still need to ensure that network connectivity is given to the client computer, so we need to ping the server address and still make sure that we can access it. So, once we've identified that changing the DNS name has not affected our network connectivity, we're going to try and connect to the Active Directory domain again by entering the NetBIOS name first. There's differences between the NetBIOS name and the fully qualified domain name, which is the FQDN. In most home or small business situations, the FQDN will end in .local. 
but your net BIOS name is basically the first half of the domain name. So in my case, this is FSA on its own. Let's just go ahead and try and connect to that. We'll click OK to confirm the changes. So if at this stage you're seeing an authentication dialog, this means everything is going to plan. The servers are communicating properly. In this computer name changes dialog box, you need to enter the administrator account for that server or an Active Directory user with administrative privileges. So right now I'm going to enter the administrator account for the FSA domain and that server that we're using. And I'm going to click OK. So give the computer a chance to communicate with the server. This could take a couple of minutes depending on the network environment, the speeds of the computers and things like that. So you know everything's gone to plan when you see welcome to the your domain name domain. This message shows that your computer is now ready to restart and log in to the Active Directory. So when your computer comes back, you need to give it a chance to, you know, get familiar with the network, pull all the group policy files. And the, the way you can see this is if you've set a message for when users log in to appear, it will appear, as you can see here, the FSA network usage policy has appeared. So we know that the computer successfully pulled the group policy from the Active Directory. So the easiest way to see if it's working is to test if it's working. Try and log in and change the log on to to your network domain. For some reason, upon first boot, it always wants to log back onto the local user. You just need to click on the drop down box and change this to your network name. FSA has shown up, of course, and then you can log in with your network user account. And if you're able to log in and you're able to pull your profile to the computer, we know everything's right. So that'll just about do it for this troubleshooting video. Also written down here, I have to view different MS TechNet articles. Microsoft does run a brilliant TechNet online community who will be able to help you out with specific error codes with connecting domain. And also another tip of mine is try with a newly installed operating system. So if you're having trouble connecting a certain computer to the domain then why not try with a virtual machine brand new xp install and then we can identify whether the server's to blame or the client computer just making sure that the policies have been pulled right now the forced proxy has appeared and we're signing into that and just to make sure that the network is okay with having the server as the dns name we're going to see if we can get through onto msn.com